He looked at me like I was like crazy, but I'll, he said, sure, T he took the snap. Back when I worked with Ferretti, um, I made a lot of trips back and forth between New Jersey and Maryland. See family and, you know, it was a four hour drive. I did it a lot of time in the middle of the night because you no know, traffic on the road and, you know, it was just, it was easy that way. I, I hate using parts of the actual day to, to drive. I just feel like it's, it's so much easier for me to drive at 2 a.m. instead of, you know, um, 2 p.m. Of all the drives that I did back and forth, one of these nights, I found myself driving around Englewood, New Jersey, which is where Gotham Dream Cars was. And as a favor, uh, Rob bought, it was a uh, two tires that just were rear tires that I bought for my car. He had a, an account through one of the tire wholesalers with Gotham Dream Cars, did me a favor, poked me up. He, he just, he shipped them to the warehouse, said he could pick them up the night. I said, perfect, no problem at all. So middle of the night, I think uh, I was at Gotham at like 1.30 a.m. or something like this. And the tires were at the business. I had to put in the key code or whatever it was to get in behind the gate, take the tires out. If anybody was watching this, I was driving at the time my silver S320, which it's seen better days. It has black 5% limo tint all the way around it, 35 on the windshield. The springs needed to be replaced at the time. And it also had a bunch of stuff in the trunk. So it kind of had like a gangster lean on it. So you've got this beat up old S320 driving around Englewood, New Jersey at 1.30 in the morning. And then a guy who's wearing massive oversized sweatpants and a sweat jacket with his hood up, get out, go to a, a lock on a, a chain link gate, put in the key code, whatever it is, get some tires out from there and put them in your trunk and then drive away. It, it looked, it looked sus. <laughs> it looked really bad. Um, you know, well, in Englewood, New Jersey, at that time of night, there were two cops on duty, just two. I passed by one of them on my way there because Gotham Dream Cars at the time when they were at that location, there was a police place not too far away. And the cop saw me put the stuff in the trunk, close the trunk, and I start on my way. I noticed the cop decided to start following me. It was blatantly obvious that he was following me, trying to figure out where we're we going. And, you know, I'm sitting at the light, I'm watching it, I'm like, all right, come on. Like, I'm waiting for him to light me up because I know it's inevitable. But he doesn't do it immediately. So, in quick thinking, because I feel like it's going to happen immediately, as I make a left turn to get away from this light, I see a 7-Eleven, I pull into the 7-Eleven, and I notice he doesn't just follow me, he parks on the side by the 7-Eleven by the road. So I'm in the parking lot, I go inside the 7-Eleven, get something to drink. I'm just watching the cop, he's just sitting there on his phone. I'm like, okay. So, definitely when I pull out of here, he's gonna nail me, right? Like, something, like, he's definitely not stopping here just because this was the convenient place to stop. Like, you've, he's been following me for almost a mile, he's going to get me. So I don't know why, maybe because, I mean, I know I had a headlight out. I know the car is tinted. It has out-of-state plates. The car looks like it just, like, I mean, it looks like a drug dealer's car because it's sagging way in the back. It, it looks bad. End of story. I figured that he would find a reason to pull me over. I didn't want to deal with it, but I knew it was probably inevitable. So just to be cute, I guess. <laughs> I don't know why it, I thought this was a good idea. But when I was in the 7-Eleven, I was getting a Snapple. And I thought, as a, a gesture of kindness, wouldn't it be funny if I gave the cop a Snapple? Maybe, maybe that would, you know, alleviate, you know, n make him know that I'm a real person, I'm not a drug dealer transporting something back to Maryland or anything like that, just to try and build some kind of rapport with this cop who was probably going to pull me over. That's what I did. I bought a Snapple. It kind of was a little scary to do at first because you're just randomly walking up to a cop car at 2 a.m. without any notice. I mean... If the cop was in the wrong mood, I wouldn't have been surprised if he pulled his gun out. But like, it was one of those things where, like, kind of like walking around the car, making sure that he can see me, and all of a sudden he goes up, he looks up, and I go, hi. Um, and I go up to the window, and I say, um, hey, you wouldn't have been following me, were you? And he's like, oh, no, no, what are you talking about? And I'm like, oh, I, just, I just noticed you were, you know, behind me for quite a little while, um, ever since Gotham Dream Cars back there. And he's like, oh, no, 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 I'm not, no, no, of course not. I'm just, this is just where I happened to stop. I was checking something. Okay, whatever, sure, of course. So I said, hey, I got you a Snapple. And he looked at me like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, <laughs> but like here, I'm just like, you know, I appreciate, you know, you, know, you guys are out late at night. No, I just figured, here you go. 
He looked at me like I was like crazy, but I'll, he said, sure, T he took the snap. So I was happy. So I figured I'm in the clear. So I pull out of the 7-Eleven. I don't see him. I'm like, coast is clear, we're good. While I'm driving, I end up making a, a loop back around the development. Um, Englewood, you know, it's like a, like a lot of places, it's like a grid. You can, you can loop back around behind, you know, the residential areas and um, you can get back on the main drag. But the way you enter Englewood, I mean, there's a big main strip you come around. But just to make it easier, I just went around the residential areas and I ended up making a left turn back onto the main road. When I did this, apparently, according to this cop, I have no idea how he saw it. I don't think he did, maybe his buddy did. Whatever it was, apparently I made a left turn out of a right turn lane. But after I leave the 7-Eleven, I think everything's fine. Coast is clear, I don't see the cop behind me, I'm good. Keep driving, I make left turn back onto the main drag to get out of Englewood and finally get on 95, drive back home. And as I'm doing this, I'm thinking to myself, God, wouldn't it be hilarious if this cop who, um, you know, I gave a Snapple to ended up pulling me over. Cause I mean, that would be such a great story, right? And lo and behold, as I was saying this, I see as I'm driving up this, because Englewood, you come down a big hill to get into there, at least from the way I came. As I'm coming up this hill, I see in my rear view mirror, red and blue lights, flooring it towards me. And I go, oh my, there's no way that this is, and it was, it was the cop. So this cop pulls me over and I knew exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> he comes over and he's like, hi. And I was like, dude, I gave you a Snapple. Like, they, they, come on, like I gave you a Snapple. Why, why'd you pull me over? And he's like, well, you made a left turn in a right turn lane back on the main drag. And I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, yeah, you were in the, you were in the left, uh, what's it called, the right turn lane and you made a left out of it. And I was like, oh, I must not have seen it. Like the roads in Englewood, if there's one thing that needs to be fixed in Englewood, it's the roads, they're horrible. I mean, the closest thing I can relate them to is like, you know, somewhere around in New York City because it just, they need to be repaved. Some of them have been, but there's more that needs to be done. It was the middle of the night. I've got a headlight out. I can't see the cracked up road where the left turn lane was. I have, I have no idea which road he was talking about or when it happened. You know, he tells me that he takes my license, registration, insurance, all that goes back to the cop car. And then the other cop that I had seen on duty, just cruising around when I was loading the tires in, he all of a sudden comes up behind him. And I've got my window cracked and you know, I'm just trying to listen to see what they're saying because I know that the question of, you know, like what the is this guy with Maryland plates doing in Jersey at you know, 1.30 in the morning or Englewood, you know, just what's he doing here? And finally I hear the cops say basically those exact words. He's like, what is this guy doing? I saw him, he's been here for 45 minutes. What's this guy doing here? And I yell out the window. I go, I can tell you why I've been here for 45 minutes. And both of them just stop talking. And then that other cop comes up to the other window, the passenger window, and he's like, hey buddy, how's it going? You know, just, uh, and I think he was like bullshit detecting me, you know, just trying to get me to see if I can miss a beat when he's asking me questions. But he's like, where are you coming from? Where are you going? Uh, what you doing? Uh, why do you have two tires in the back of your car? Uh, wouldn't they fit in the trunk? And I'm like, no, I've already got two in there. Like I have another two, they're brand new, they're going on the car. He's asking me all these questions and um, finally I end up name dropping Gotham Dream Cars. Turns out he knew Ferretti. Perfect. <laughs> so he's like, oh yeah, I know Gotham Dream Cars. I'm like, yeah, 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 I was picking up the tires from there. and. Finally, the guy just comes back and just gives me a warning. And he says, if, when you get pulled over driving home for having a headlight out, um, show this to the cop and say that, you know, I already wrote you a warning and everything like that. I drove home, I didn't get pulled over at all. I just drove with my high beams on. Needless to say, I thought as, may, maybe next time I'll get him like a coffee or like a donut, whatever it is, but like a Snapple is a no-go if you're trying to avoid getting pulled over by cops in Englewood, New Jersey at 2 a.m. If you get a speeding ticket or other traffic citation, don't just pay it. It can involve costly insurance premium increases, points on your license, possible suspensions, and a lot of other inconveniences. And when you fight it, you want the right people on your side. That means finding a local lawyer to wherever you got the ticket, even if it's in your backyard or on a road trip or wherever, off the record is the best way to find the best attorney. They pair you with a local attorney wherever you get the ticket to fight for you and achieve the best outcome. In most cases, you won't even have to appear. So be sure to check them out at the link in the description below and download their free app. You just take a picture of your ticket and they handle the rest. So be sure to check them out and thank them for their support of VinWiki.